Hello everyone. Good morning. I'm Steve from You Can English Tutoring, a pioneer institution that helps you to prepare well for the OET, IELTS and PT academic examinations. I have received a request from one of the students to assess her OET letter and provide the word by word feedback along with the feedback against each criteria before the overall score so that she can understand where she is missing her uh, points and scores. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to assess that letter and provide the assessment. All right, let's before we start this letter correction, I just would like to uh, tell you that there are several membership programs that are available on my YouTube channel. If you wish to become one of the members, uh, such as silver, gold, or platinum, you can click on the join tab that is located close to the subscription button. You can also watch the description of this video where you can find out the link to join as a member. When you join the member, uh, you should be able to receive a lot of benefits, including the way each section is going to be categorized and uh, how you need to find out the case notes, how you need to transform them into full sentences. You will also be able to access proven strategies for uh, writing, uh, reading, speaking, and listening. In addition to that, you will also have ability to uh, see the videos where I'm going to assess the letters at 400 out of 500 grades or even 450 out of 500 grades, which is going to be A grade anyway. Um, let's start the assessment now. If you find this assessment helpful, may I request you to like this video, share with the others, uh, such as your WhatsApp groups, uh, Telegram groups, and so on. Uh, you can also write down the comments if you dislike the video, um, stating the reason so that it can help me out to improve the quality of my videos as well. I'm quite happy uh, to see the criticism because I have noticed some of the people dislike the, my videos, but if you can give me the reason, that would be a great help. I would like to ensure that everyone receives the best quality assessment for their speaking and writing corrections. And that's why I'm posting these videos. All right, let's start the assessment now. <clears throat> you have written down uh, Paul Therese, but unfortunately, Paul Therese uh, should have started with the Mr. or Mrs. or so on. So if it is Mr., you need to write down the salutation on the top of the addressee section itself. So what you should have done is, instead of writing down Paul Therese, you should have written down Mr. Paul Ferris. Okay, that's what you should have done. That's really important. We need to always write down the uh, prefix of the uh, addressee, okay, to whom we are writing down. Okay, that should have been the, the good thing. Manager of Summer Seat Nursing Home. Okay, you can just mention the manager only here and then Summer Seat Nursing Home can go in the next line. This is just a recommendation. They're not gonna reduce the mark for writing this one, but there is a better way of writing down. Okay, so you can say the manager and then you can write down Summer Seat Nursing Home in the next line and then Gordon Street can go in the following line and then the Berry Town, okay? Remember that Berry Town, if it has got two words, okay, you have to write down the capital T for the second uh, word as well, okay? So you should have started with that. Uh, but okay, let me see now if you have included that. Okay, let me see. All right. uh, is it Berry Town? Yeah, Berry Town is one word only. That's good. I'm happy with that. All right, let's continue with the assessment now. So you have written on the date uh, underneath that. I'm very happy with that. <coughs> Sorry. And you have written down the reference details of the patient, which is uh, regarding Mrs. Anne Ellis, aged 76. That's good. Dear Mr. Ferris, um, it's highly recommended to place a comma after this. Um, okay, so dear Mr. Ferris. Okay, let me go ahead with that. Dear Mr. Ferris, so you should place a comma. So you should do, use the punctuation marks properly. All right, so you should say, Dear Mr. Ferris, and then comma. Okay. All right, let's go to the next one. I am writing to it's, it's highly recommended to leave a line in between, okay, in between here. All right. And uh, the regarding reference data should come after the salutation as well. So that's another problem. All right. Um, leave a blank line between the salutation of the recipient and the first sentence of the introduction paragraph. 
Okay, that's one thing. And then I'll write down the reference details of the patient after the salutation and before the introduction paragraph. After the salutation of the recipient and before the introduction paragraph. A recommendation okay let's go ahead with the introduction paragraph now i am writing to you regarding mrs and elise who was admitted to us on you don't need to say who was admitted to us you can't use you know the people in this place you can use a facility for example who was admitted to our hospital who are admitted to hospital that's okay but you can't write down admitted to us it doesn't make sense okay? it doesn't make sense so to us, you have to say to our hospital, for example, if it is a hospital, you can write it down or you can say to hospital, that's fine, okay? So this needs to be um, you know, rectified, but let's go ahead with the next one. <clears throat> On 12 June, 2018, well, when you, when you write down, uh, you know, the dates, okay? It is highly recommended to, uh, interpret the dates in the form of time references okay so which means 16 june 2018 it's better to use four days ago but it is all right and again when you write down the date you have to you remove the year if it occurs in the same day i mean same year all right so let's say 12 june 2018 you could have written down 12 june that's it uh, however the best situation is to write down four days ago Okay, that would have been the best uh, presentation of and you can write down this one as well I mean, four days ago okay that would be much better i hope you understand what i mean uh, let's go ahead with the next one all right uh where is the next one yeah admitted to okay and uh, with the complaints of unilateral lift um i don't know what this what this is 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 that joint or loin? Yeah, and okay, growed pain. Okay, growed pain. Okay, low load and growed pain. I believe you know it's uh, yeah. The handwriting should have been a bit better. She didn't write it down properly anyway. That's all right. Um, and growing pain. Okay, it's growing. I think it's loin left loin and growing pain. I believe so. Uh, which is radiating to lower back and vomiting now i mean the the way you should have written down is okay so let's say vomiting vomiting should have gone to the first one for example uh, vomiting and unilateral left loin and growing pain which is radiating to lower back i think that would be much better otherwise you know this one doesn't make sense okay it's better to move you know vomiting towards this one towards this area move it uh, before unilateral all right that would be highly recommended okay and vomiting place it before not and actually and needs to be removed anyway and needs to go after vomiting okay place before uni later on okay that should be much better all right and the other issue is uh, okay i think yeah that's all right let's go ahead with the pa patient looks restless okay you don't need to say patient looks but you have to say the patient looks patient the patient looks okay that's that's going to be the correct way of writing down the information all right let's go through the next one it's the next one all right the next one is looks restless okay uh groan aching with the and groan groan aching groan aching with the pain Okay, I mean, you don't need to tell the same thing again because you have already mentioned this one, growing pain, right? I don't need to, uh, you know, you don't, you don't need to write it down once again. Okay, on admission, her vital says there should be a comma after on admission. Okay, so let's say on admission. Say on admission, comma. That should be the correct answer. That's that's how you need to write down the sentence anyway. All right. Um, so on admission, comma her vital signs were not stable. Okay, were not stable. That's fine. Her medical history reveals uh, that she is allergic to um, 
tremadol. So that's the medication. So she is allergic to this particular medication. So that's fine. So this sentence is good. You know, these two sentences are grammatically correct. It is highly recommended to leave a blank line between two paragraphs, but you haven't done that, which is not good. Under layout, your scores are going to be dramatically uh, damaged. Okay, so Mrs. Ellis had undergone uh, CT scan, a CT scan, okay, and shows bilateral cleavage. No, 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 no. Okay, let's say, um, all right, so one thing is undergone CT scan. So one thing is you should say undergone, okay, wait a minute, all right, yep, yeah. undergone a computer tomographic scan. It is highly recommended to uh, computer tomography scan, okay. It's highly recommended to expand. Okay, try not to use the same abbreviations from the case notes. It is highly recommended to expand it, you know, to make your letter more formal. Remember that a letter is 100% formal. So it is highly recommended to make it more formal as much as you can so that you can get really good score. And shows, again, and shows is wrong. Okay, uh, I'll tell you why. Okay, and shows. You should say which showed or that showed. Okay, that showed. That would have been much better. Otherwise, you know, this whole sentence structure is incorrect. So, Mrs. Ellis had undergone see, a, a, a computer tomography scan that showed bilateral renal calculi and um, hydro, hydro, okay, hydro, uh, hydro nephrosis. Oh, it's nephrosis. Okay, look at the way you have written on N. It's not that good, you know, because you are uh, writing down really longer lines. See, everything, you know, does matter, okay, because people are not able to understand what you're writing down. So it's really important that you, you know, write down the words and letters properly, okay. And the calculi of four mm size, uh, okay, which obstructs the pelvi uteric junction okay that's fine um, but uh, the problem is you know you if it is the ongoing condition this is fine um, otherwise you know you should have mentioned which obstructed okay but it did solve it because this is ongoing anyway so that's fine i'm happy with the present verb here in line of treatment um, there should be a comma here so placement of punctuation marks is really important in line of treatment so you should have placed a comma after treatment Okay, so treatment, you should say treatment, comma. Okay, that is important. Let's go to the next one. Mrs. Ellie, okay, see this one? You have committed a mistake, see this one? The, the surname of the patient is Ellis, but what you have written on here is Ellie only. This is not good, isn't it? You should not misspell the name of the patient, which is one of the major problem with all the students, okay? Uh, not with all of them, maybe most of them. Okay, so it's better to proofread once you finish your letter. So there are few things that you can proofread. One is the name of the patient, and then the other is the name of the addressee, and then the salutations of both the name uh, of the patient as well as the um, addressee. Okay, so those things can can be uh, proofread. Okay, also see whether you have mispresented the personal pronouns of any of them. Okay, I mean, instead of uh, um, writing, instead of writing down his or he or him, uh, you, you might have written down her, uh, you know, she or something else, you know, that is in relation to, um, you know, different personal nouns. Okay, if you have done that, it's not good. Okay, so you have to go and rectify them, please. That can help a lot. Okay, right. Uh, Miss, Mrs., uh, Mrs. Elise has received IV fluids. It's better to say intravenous fluids. It is always recommended to write down the expansions of the words, okay? So you can say intravenous fluids, okay? All right, let's go ahead with the next one. Intravenous fluids of uh, two liter per day um, in order to, okay, remember this. There are many people who do not know that in order is going to have two words. In order has got two words. Remember that this is wrong. You know, when you write down using one word, it doesn't look good. Though we speak these two words together, like in order to, the way we write is different. So the way we write in English and the way we speak are going to be entirely different from one another. All right, I hope you understand what I mean. All right, let's go to the next one. Sorry. 
to avoid dehydration okay in order to avoid dehydration because of vomiting yeah that's fine also treated with okay so you have put a full stop here and then you said uh, you started a sentence with uh, also if it is if it is not a full stop okay again this is wrong the reason is the miss ellie has received so you see has received um and she was also treated and also treated is wrong because you can't use the this subject here you can't say mrs elli also treated this is wrong so and also so you should have mentioned and also okay let's say what you should have done and she was also she was also this is perfect and she was also treated all right and she was also treated with the iv again iv intravenous so iv needs to be expanded Okay, IV needs to be expanded. Intravenous. Okay, that's the perfect way of expanding all the abbreviations, please. And IV again, this one. Okay, on 13 June 2008, you should place a comma. Okay, and 2008 is not. Yep, on 13 June, you should place a comma. Otherwise, you can say three days ago, okay, or the uh, following day after the admission, okay, the day after the admission, okay, or you can say uh, three days ago, all right, you can write like this, three days ago, okay. So you can represent the sequence of events when you use these kinds of time phrases, because they can help you out a lot in order to organize the letter very effectively, so that the reader is able to follow you. <clears throat> Mrs. Elise um, has <clears throat> started on T, <clears throat> uh, T time. So uh, you don't need to say has started uh, this one. You can say simply has started. You don't need to use on. You can simply say started. That's it. Because she started something, you know, taking the medications, right? So you don't need to use started on. But when you say commenced, commence need an or uh, preposition that is on okay so you should say she has commenced on whereas when you have to use started it, it does go without any prepositions okay item gbd remember that you need to expand you know these abbreviations bd means it's a 8 mg bd you have to say eight milligram i would recommend my students to expand even the mg you know the units okay twice a day because it's BD means twice a day. So it's really important that we expand all the abbreviations in our letter to aid spontaneous passage of calculus. Okay, her vital signs uh, were stable after 36 hours and all IV medications uh, has changed. Look at this. When you say all IV medications and then you use has, okay, this one medications have been changed to or were changed to. So you should say medications has changed. That's wrong. It should be medications have been changed to. Okay, that's one way. Uh, otherwise, sorry. Mistake. Yeah. So otherwise, you can say medications we have were changed. Okay. So you can say um, sorry, or medications were changed to something else. All right. That's fine. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Mrs. Ellis was uh, fit for discharge on 16, um, 16 June 2008. I mean, it's it's not good because it is today, isn't it? Okay, so you can say Mrs. Ellis is fit for discharge now. All right. Okay, so don't use was. Okay, was fit. Oh, it's not correct. Is fit because you're writing down the letter at the moment. And then you say on 16 June 2008. This is not how you have to represent the information is like now or today because it's today you're writing down the letter on the same day so you don't need to say on 16 june 2018 it's better to say today okay that's going to help a lot with an outpatient urology appointment on 20 july 2018 give a space between this number and then the month okay it's going to help a lot all right you can't write down like this 20 july you know 2018 all right so it's not good so you can say 20 july again you don't need to use 
um, you know, the year here because it's going to be uh, held in the same year. And the other thing is um, 20, between 20 and July, you have to give a small gap, okay? Give adequate spacing because spacing is going to help a lot. Like the way you have given, you know, between she and was, and then was and advised, you know, it's going to be of great help to showcase your ability to organize and provide the good layout of the letter. So she was advised. This is one of the common mistakes committed by every student. Okay, they get confusion between advised and advised. Okay, all right, let me tell you what you have to do. All right, let's say advised. So this, there's no word like this with this spelling. There's no word, it's wrong. It's wrong, okay, why? Let's say either you can use advised. Okay, this is the verb form of advice. Okay, what's the noun form? The noun form is this advice. So what you are trying to do is to change the noun form of advice uh, to a verb form just by adding d at the end, and it's wrong. It's wrong. You should not do this. All right, please remember this. All right, advice to continue uh, t whatever it is. Okay, and uh, t also encouraged. Okay, also encouraged. No, no, no. Was also and also and also was encouraged. Otherwise, you can say you can write this one down maybe in the next one. Okay. In the next sentence, all right. Encouraged her. Who encouraged her? Also encouraged her. No, it's wrong. Also, she has been encouraged to drink two to three liter. Okay, let's say when you write down like this. Okay, also encouraged. Sorry, encouraged. Okay. She has been also encouraged. And then two to three liter, isn't it? You're writing like this. No, this is wrong. This is not good. two to three liters of, okay? That's what you got to say. Two to three liters of water. You have to write down in words, okay? If the numbers are below 10 of water daily to promote the passage of stone through urine. Okay, that's all right. Um, recommended her, oh my God. You started a sentence with the verb. We never ever do that. Please, this is grammatically incorrect. And this is one of the common mistakes that is committed by everyone. So recommended her is wrong. So you can say, for example, in addition, uh, she is recommended to, and then you can write down uh, whatever the action you wanted to request them. She recommended to use, she recommended to use of sieve. No, 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 use sieve, that's it. Don't use use of sieve. Okay, that's wrong. All right, use of sieve. So you should say use sieve. All right, that's gonna help a lot. Okay, let's go ahead with the next one. To check the passage of urine and has to be sent. Okay, no, no, send has to be, has to send. Okay, no, 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 no. Okay, has to be sent. All right, one thing is, has to be, okay, never ever goes with the present verb. It goes only with the past participle verb. I mean, the third form of the has to be sent. That's correct, has to be sent, okay? All right. To be sent for lab analysis. Okay, please contact me for any queries. Um, try not to use queries because queries is going to be more informal. So it's better to use questions, all right? It's better to use questions. Okay, let's go ahead with the next one. What is the next one? You are sincerely spelling mistake. All right, and then this one as well. There are a couple of issues here. Okay, so you were viewers and then sincerely. All right, in this case, it's wrong. Okay, let's say there are a couple of issues. See the way it changes the spelling because it's not correct. All right, so what you should have done is yours and then sincerely and then comma. Okay, so that's the correct way of writing down. So you don't need to place an apostrophe here because it's not the possessive noun. Okay, that's wrong. All right, let me go ahead with the next one. So you should have placed a comma, but if you don't place a comma here, as well as the salutation, it is acceptable. All right, it is acceptable actually, okay. Charge nurse, uh, Berrytown Public Hospital, okay. Try not to write down Berrytown here, write down in the same order, like, you know, here as well as here. Okay, right. 
Okay, let's go through the assessment factor now. The assessment is one. Grammar is a major area of concern. You need to be able to improve your scores if you understand these grammatical mistakes so that you can get really good scores all right uh, so mainly it's all in relation to the use of nouns verbs uh, what i can say tenses and so on articles prepositions everything almost everything so use of articles nouns verbs use of articles verbs nouns tenses and prepositions needs to be improved needs to be improved a lot so it's not gonna help much you know if you don't rectify these mistakes okay the next thing is spelling spelling is another area of concern so you can't you shouldn't commit these kinds of spelling mistakes okay um, expand all the abbreviation space please this is one of the assessment criteria you have to do this this is one of the assessment criteria okay so you can't just avoid you know this one it's not good all right, no worries. Let's go to the next one. All right, connectivity could have been better because you have been using the same uh, phrases, you know, connecting phrases again and again, which is not good. Vocabulary is all right, but again, but the use of more formal words is highly recommended, okay? You should have used a range of sentence structures, range of sentences such as complex, uh, compound and simple correctly. So you have been getting a lot of uh, mistakes and you know, when you have used these sentence structures, okay? That's not good. Uh, what else? Let's say presentations, you should have uh, improved a lot in under layout and presentation, okay? Presentation and layout need to be improved a lot, okay? Overall task fulfillment could have been improved as well. Could have been improvised uh, by Writing down less words instead of dragging sentences dramatically. Okay, so what you are doing is you are trying to expand the sentences like anything, and unfortunately, you are committing mistakes, you know, in those sentences. So it could have been avoided. All right, that's my humble request. Okay, passive form should have been used. Passive voice form, passive voice form should have been used to make the little even more formal. Okay, let me see if you have used all the case, relevant case notes in order to pick it up. Okay, let's go ahead with this. So that's the one, Mrs. and Elise. Okay, it's Mrs. and Elise. See if we have included all the relevant case notes or not. Okay. So, Miss Annalise, it's better to minimize. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. Uh, okay, let's read the writing task first. See the function. Okay, I'm going to tattoo the Mr. Mr. Paul Farris, manager of Summer Summer State Nursing Home, according to who will be responsible for continuing care at the nursing home. See this one? It's already known. It's a known case because Alice is going to uh, be, you know, in the nursing home. Okay, let's read the case notes so that we can confirm this information. All right. Uh, when you see the residence, it's going to be the Summer Seed Nursing Home, which is, um, you know, the same place. So you don't need to mention any of this uh, social or the medical background, and you didn't include it. I'm very happy with that. All right. I'm happy with that. So that's the one. 26 year, uh, 76 year old. He's a patient in the medical ward uh, of which you are a charge nurse, in which you are a charge nurse. Okay, that's fine. Hospital, that's okay. Renal colic. 
or deletion of uh, L collecting system obstructing uh, pelvic uteric junction PUG calculus. Okay, these are the diagnoses of MRI. Mm. Okay. That's fine. So you didn't include the next of kin uh, resistance and everything. That's all right. Condylar surgery. Okay, that's not either medical history is not needed. All admission. These are the things. Uh, you should have included these things. Yeah, oh, I think you have summarized it. Yeah, I'm happy with that. See the results. Trial market ring. Okay, more red by the process. Okay, obstructing. I mean, you could have used at least some of the synonyms. You have been repeating the same words again and again, which is not good. Medications and treatment. Yeah, you have used all these things, but unfortunately, you have used the same abbreviations in your letter as well, which is not good. I wouldn't recommend you to use the same ones. Stable vital signs within say, 36 hours. It's better to say in a day, in, in, in one and a half a day or something like that, you know. In a day and a half, something like that, you could have, you know, used. All right, let me go through this assessment patient right for the discharge. Sure, you are already using the same words, okay, which is not good, which is not good. All right, uh, for the patient appointment, patient appointment. All right, yeah, everything else is good. I'm happy with the way that you have been including all the relevant case notes. Um, so that's really good. You should have mentioned this one, isn't it? You should have mentioned this one because you are going to provide the continuing care. So you should know that, you know, the dietitian uh, needs to monitor these things, you know, salt intake. Okay, all those uh, you know, instructions need to, need to be included, but you haven't done that, which is not good, which is not good. All right, so I'm not uh, quite convinced to give you even 300 for this uh, letter because it has got a lot of uh, issues. Okay, look at this one. There are like 32 mistakes and most of them are the major ones. Okay, so uh, one case note uh, regarding the dietitian's involvement missing okay only one case note is missing apart from that everything else is all right according to me okay the expected score will be according to me this one can get you perhaps 250 out of 500 okay you need to work out a lot in order to improve your skills i hope this video has been helpful if you would like to get your first letter and role play assisted free of cost please contact me on my WhatsApp or mobile number that is plus six one four six eight four eight zero eight double seven. You can also reach me on my email address that is steve at you can English tutoring.com or on my Facebook page that is www.facebook.com slash you can tutoring. I've been helping more than 12,000 people since 2008 to pass their IELTS, OET and PT academic examination. Thank you for watching this video. I wish you good luck with your preparation and the real OET examination. Take care. Bye-bye.